The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host. Once more into the breach do we go, dear friends. As always, we like to meet at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. As it does. Uh, what else do we have going on out here? Well, uh, we're just uh, getting started, really. Um, of course, uh, Friday was expiration. Uh, what do we have today? It is options rollover Monday and Tuesday. Um, I have to say that uh, I was looking for either way up or way down today by the close and then just to reverse it tomorrow. But man, uh, this has got to be the lightest options rollover day for a Monday. I'm going to go back and look at the break, but I think I'm going to say three, four, maybe five years. It's been a long time since we've had such light volatility or range in the S&P 500 uh, the day after options expiration. Well, what is uh, options rollover? That is, there are a lot of stocks that are put on as hedges against those options positions. And, of course, uh, if it is going against them, they can buy and sell and slow a market down. Uh, on a particular stock, uh, the bigger the market, a little harder to do, uh, but you can do it. But in individual stocks, it's not uncommon. So you'll have more positions maybe from Friday than uh, one would normally have if you're a broker dealer or an option market maker. So some of those have to come off. Uh, some of those shorts have to be covered. Some of the long positions have to be sold and then what do you get ready for? You get ready for the next cycle. Some cycles are short, and people look at maybe 30, 45 days out if you're an option market maker. Uh, but uh, there are a few times in the year, uh, mostly the last week of the year, and this time where they want to look pretty much out through the summer. So we're going to be getting a fairly good read in the next couple of days what option market makers and most of those people um, work for big street names like J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs or, uh, of course, uh, the uh, much, uh, much fabled oracle of uh, Omaha, Mr. Buffett. Uh, anyway, these giant guys that sell puts and calls normally covered uh, and uh, collect a little extra cash for the most part are more interested uh, in right now. Uh, trying to figure out what the long term is. And of course, very tough. Uh, when we get into the middle part of the month, we've got uh, the Fed meeting. A week after that, we've got uh, the British exit issues. And uh, there will be more and more things like that that continue on. So uh, not much happening. A very quiet day. Uh, and uh, let me update everything here just to make sure that everything hasn't gone wacko. And a total lack of volume. Uh, this is a very quiet day for volume for options. And that may mean that there aren't a lot of them being written. Uh, I haven't uh, checked in a great deal. Normally, I don't bother looking until Wednesday at options to figure out what's going on. But normally, if you have an up day on Monday, you have a down day on Tuesday. If you have an, uh, a down day on Monday, you have an up day on Tuesday. And then you get into the Wednesday and you find out where the long-term trends in the market truly are going. I tend to look at these days as noise, but uh, hard to look at them as noise when uh, we're up uh, uh, not even a point on the S&P cash at 2052, and uh, there is a, a total lack of volume. 
and that is uh, 1.85 billion shares. Have we already gone into summer trading? It is a possibility, but I'm looking for a lighter volume, and that means that some stocks out there uh, that have too high of short interest uh, are uh, ripe for uh, going after them and uh, running them up the flagpole a bit uh, into lighter and lighter volume. And of course, the old saying is, do not be short a quiet market. Uh, we talked about Netflix on Friday. I don't think this is anything more than way too many people getting way too short. A lot of these stocks and in light volume, it is easy for hijinks to ensue. Um, but uh, it's time to get this party started. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating. What's ever happened before will happen again because of human nature. Everybody always thinks that the world will change. It will change when human nature changes. And guess what? I don't see human nature changing. On this day in uh, 1908, John Barden is born. Uh, you may not know his name, but my guess is everything you touch today uh, is impacted by this gentleman. With William Shockey in 1947, he invented the transistor at uh, Bell Labs and uh, changed uh, our world forever, uh, especially the world of electronics, uh, the amount of power that's being consumed by these devices, and, of course, uh, put the kibosh on tubes for the most part. Uh, the bigger, that's probably the bigger part of the news. The thing that interested me uh, most about uh, today in financial history was in 1995, Sun Microsystems uh, launches Java, the universal internet programming languages that bring white space greater interactivity to millions of websites and internet users. And what is special, if you're not into technology, like I am, uh, probably not a lot, or at least you don't think there is. But what Java was, was the first mainstream program in language that did something called object-oriented programming. And uh, some people call it OOPS, but uh, OOP. Uh, it breaks down into logical units what programming is all about. Uh, and uh, it's kind of like uh, learning basic English where you find out there's a noun and a pronoun and a verb and you basically tear everything down into basic parts and build it back up, uh, kind of like uh, Lego. You get uh, the little parts, bigger parts, but uh, you break it down into many things. But most of those things are properties. Uh, if it was a car, is it a two-door or a four-door? Is it a convertible? Does it have an AM, FM radio? Uh, does it have factory air from a total air-conditioned factory? or actual real air conditioning. Each one of those is a checkbox. Those are properties. There are methods. Uh, if you have a uh, stick shift, uh, each one would be a forward reverse, would be a method. Uh, your uh, brake has a method, and uh, that's uh, being stomped on, so you don't hit the car in front of you. And of course, if you need to take off, you're smashing down the accelerator. Those are all properties. And uh, we'll talk more about this in the end, but. Uh, Probably the biggest change in why software moves so fast today uh, can be drawn with a nice line back to this day in 1995. And we'll talk about uh, the implications about this for stocks going forward. And then we'll get into uh, a little bit more news and then some charts at the bottom of the app. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now, now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 uh anyway um we talked about properties methods and what's left events and that is when things actually occur like a light coming on on the dashboard of your car or uh, the phone ringing. Um, and uh, by tearing apart things down to these three basic areas, uh, you can pretty much tackle any issue. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of other stuff in it, but object-oriented programming. Launched uh, Sun into the lead. Uh, they gave this away, made it uh, basically public domain, uh, but controlled it. And, of course, it sold a great deal of the early uh, web servers and services. Uh, but uh, quickly, uh, they saw the error of their ways when uh, Java ended up uh, on Linux systems that they didn't sell. Uh, Microsoft saw the same thing. That was that uh, uh, fairly quickly by about 2000 or early 2000s, um, the Red Hat folks and the ilk and their ilk uh, started making uh, Linux servers, Unix-based systems, that uh, no one really owned the code to, for the most part. Uh, and uh, it made a problem. Today, um, you've got to think that Microsoft has really gotten into this vein. They have something that was loosely framed uh, around Java. It's called the .NET Framework. It's what I program in. Uh, but the important part of this is Microsoft is doing what the Sun did again. Uh, it is trying to make an open version of its .NET framework uh, that competes with Java, that is free, but will be maintained and uh, moved forward. A lot of uh, programming languages uh, that are free eventually run out of steam as uh, some new feature would take far too much work for people to do for free. And... Uh, and they kind of die their own death. Microsoft uh, doing very well. In fact, uh, I got a new uh, deal with them just over the weekend uh, where they're showing what they call their uh, .NET Core, 
uh, and uh, making it available everywhere. But um, yeah, one of these things where Sun did a fairly good job of uh, uh, screwing themselves over by giving away Java. Now Oracle owns it, and uh, they've pretty much put the kibosh on any a lot of new uh, work on it and uh, really kind of forcing people back into other programming languages. But uh, if you wonder one of the reasons why Microsoft's doing so well, it is uh, going down the road of Sun Microsystems, but trying not to make the same mistakes they did in the early days. Still remain control, still drive it, but sell the tools and the tooling that it takes to actually make programming. And that's what they're trying to hit me up for. Uh, but uh, on this day in 1995, and of course in 1908, John Bartom, who later in 1947 would uh, go together with Mr. Shockley of diode fame to uh, create the transistor. Um, as I always say, what you want to do is watch the news on Friday night because that's where the bad news comes, uh, whether it's in politics or legally or uh, companies uh, and their earnings and bad news. They like to bury it in the weekend. Hopefully, everybody will forget about it come Monday. Uh, politicians are probably the worst on this. Uh, they will uh, dump it, go hide the whole weekend, come back Monday and go, well, that was last Friday. What are you bringing it up for now? Well, because uh, you were a little skunk and a weasel, and you dropped it out there Friday night, and then you ran and hid. So that's why we're bringing it up now. One of the things that I saw sneak through uh, was on Friday after the bell uh, that uh, Edmonds came out. I don't think that they were trying to spike this. Just um, It didn't seem to percolate uh, through the financial community until late night, and I think that's because they were kind of trying to bury it. It doesn't do them any good at CNBC to have even less people watch. Uh, but... Uh, with 30% of the automobile loans in the last 12 calendar months were underwater, that is up from February, uh, where 27% of the loans were underwater. Actually, when people went to trade in their car, they owed more money than the dealer would give them. It's called being underwater. And, of course, we can remember the heady days of everybody being underwater uh, in 2007 where they were mortgaging their house uh, like an ATM, more than a quarter of the car buyers still owe an average of more than $4,257 on their vehicle. So uh, if you uh, didn't think that uh, we were robbing Peter to pay Paul and mortgaging the future of uh, the company, uh, the country by trying to push sales out now, uh, just uh, think that eventually most of these will come to fruition the only thing these people can do is continue to make payments on their car uh, or double up. And, of course, uh, if you're a, uh, a child of the go-go 80s and 90s, I guess you got to have that new Audi, right? You can't wait another year until you're at least flat. you got to eh, go in some more debt. Now, I can only think about what how that happens. Uh, IBM is making news today, but most people did not go below the fold. That is uh, some real uh, inside newspaper stuff. Uh, software giant IBM is initiating another round of cuts. Uh, they are going to uh, top about 14,000 uh, of their folks. What is different and what was it not reported? And why IBM is pretty much moving not at all today. Uh, they have job openings for 25,000 people. And uh, also, if you dug deep enough, what? IBM's up a penny, by the way. If you dig deep enough, IBM is going to be uh, hiring 25,000 people and actually will have more people employed than they started with in 19 or in uh, 2015. So uh, IBM may have found a low, low watermark. I'm not saying it goes higher, but I'm saying it may have found some kind of low uh, watermark this year. Stock price is probably more a function of market price, uh, overall markets, uh, than IBM at the moment. But uh, you got Mr. Buffett behind it, uh, throwing cash. 
And of course, uh, lastly, uh, Monsanto is up a bit. Uh, where's my little, uh, eh, why did I miss it? I'll put it up here, right here. Um, why do I have strip malls versus the inside mall? Mess to that. Uh, anyway, Monsanto up $5.04. What I wanted to talk about was uh, uh, whether or not uh, these uh, ideas that uh, Monsanto was going to get bought out has any kind of validity. Of course, they have an offer sitting on the table for $122. Bucks. Um, why is this thing uh, at least 16 if not f uh, lower down? And also... Uh, why is this thing nowhere close to the $140, $145 that Wall Street says it is? When we get back, we're going to tell a little story about Rodney Dangerfield and uh, why the truth is always in the price. We'll be back after this. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, post message in the game. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, just one thing, um, when uh, the whole Monsanto thing started to come out, I thought it was some kind of stunt. 
mostly because the stock price did not go correctly. That is, uh, if uh, Wall Street thinks that it's true and someone's mentioning 122 bucks, then it probably goes to 122 bucks. But um, Andy's got a couple of, of articles out, one at Seeking Alpha, one at uh, one of his other ag uh, websites. And uh, eh, maybe I'll post the links to them. But uh, I thought for a while, why does not this make absolutely no sense? Um, but uh, it didn't take me very long, about five minutes uh, and I thought this was some kind of stunt to short squeeze um, and make the people at Bear look like something's actually going on. The reason why is in Andy's article today, but I knew it uh, when I was talking to him, what, about a week ago. That is, uh, it's illegal. Uh, genetically modified foods in Germany are illegal. Why would you want to buy a company that you can't even sell the product in your own country? Um, that whole thing is fraught with issues. I've been watching it closely. Um, I'm hoping it goes higher. I think uh, when this all comes out in the wash, uh, it, Monsanto goes right back. And if we're lucky, they will jack this thing all up and uh, give me an opportunity to short this thing because uh, I don't buy it for a second. But uh, no trade at the moment out here. But uh, it's not uncommon to see Wall Street... Uh, uh, fan the flames of something that goes nowhere. Uh, the last time I saw something that was this stupid was the Dell EMC merger, and uh, it continues to be uh, that stupid. But uh, some people just can't let go of a bad idea. I'm occasionally like that, but uh, I don't think so on this one. I think uh, bad ideas sometimes get a life of themselves. Sometimes, like uh, Microsoft buying Yahoo back in the mid-2000s, uh, adults and uh, even the perpetrator of the stupid idea finally wakes up. I'm just wondering when they will. Again, doesn't make a great deal of sense to almost bankrupt, bankrupt your company with a debt as bare wood to buy a, a, com a, a company where you can't sell your product in your own country. And uh, guess what? It's uh, going to be a lot more of those countries uh, that uh, outlaw all of genetically modified foods. Um, I'm not on one of those guys because I know scientifically eh, all food is genetically modified. Um, and uh, I don't think you can say anything more about it than that other than a uh, pretty stupid idea, but we'll see how this plays out. Uh, and take a look at Andy's article on it for the full uh, skinny, as they say in the military. It is a mad, 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 mad market, and uh, eh, sometimes people just have to do insane things. And I'm going to call it insane in the membrane. i got to get that for a, a drop here, but, uh, well, it's, uh, Monsanto's up a whole 5 bucks or 5%, uh, but uh, still, what, 17 bucks below the rumored buyout price. Uh, what else do we have going on? Oh, I wanted to look at some of these stocks that are moving. Of course, uh, the other big tale out here, we've talked about it for a week, has been that uh, um, Apple will get and uh, uh, start making huge amounts of cash. First, it was in China. Uh, they got shut down there. Now, it's uh, the whole beating the drum is all about how they're going to make huge amounts of money in India. Uh, we've talked about uh, if they can't make money in China, it has got to be uh, a, a order of magnitude harder to make money in um, India. Uh, the reason why uh, is uh, that uh, it takes, uh, what, uh, it was, uh, I think it was a fourth, and yeah, no, it was a tenth of a yearly income in China for most of the people that live in the cities to actually buy an iPhone. Uh, it was a fourth of a yearly income of the people that live, uh, the average people that live in Bombay. It, of course, is now called something else, but I will call it Bombay. Uh, India, it is uh, continuing an issue. Anyway, uh, I didn't think that uh, these bounces were going to last a great deal. It would only take a while for everybody to figure out that the bluster and the rampant uh, beating the drum from Wall Street on Apple's stock price would, of course, move into some others. It is uh, stocks like 
Skyworks solution are higher. But uh, I think uh, you're going to have to buy parts for any cell phone that anybody makes. Of course, India uh, doesn't even have LTE or many LTE towers. I think they've got a couple in a few cities, but that's about it. Nobody really has high-speed Internet through their phone in India. Uh, when uh, Apple was rebuffed and no one would buy their product, uh, what did they do? They took all those trade-in iPhones, tried to sell them at a lower price. India threw them out, too. Uh, as we've talked for many times, there is no free market when it comes uh, to the Far East, and everybody keeps claiming it a land of milk and honey. Uh, I say nay, 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 nay. Take a look at Apple here. but um, A lot of times these are just stunts carried out uh, against uh, people that are far too short. Uh, what Apple is doing is coming up to its gap. That gap is on April 27th. It had 114, let's call it 115 million shares. And, of course, uh, what do we got now getting into that candle? 26 million shares. Well, let me see. I'm going to weigh this. We've got uh, 114 million and 26 million. 100. Well, I can even do that math. There's no volume on this push back up. And, of course, if you look at the last five days uh, on the volume, you can see volume coming out of these each day. Yet a nice spike. It's still higher out here. Could it get back up into the $100 mark? Uh, that's probably the trading range for Apple now, which is somewhere around 100 bucks to 90 uh, But everybody keeps on, uh, everybody beating the drum, telling people, I've ordered huge amounts of parts. Um the iPhone 7 is not until next year. Uh, if I'm buying this for the iPhone 7, uh, why buy it now when it's going to be nine months before you see the next iPhone? Well, because uh, Wall Street wants to get out of this dog. Uh, it has fleas, and uh, you, know, you probably have people that are looking for things like dividends uh, as Apple moves from the big moving stock that it has been into a stock that... Uh, has a ton of cash, $238 billion, so uh, probably tough to actually short it. But at the same time, uh, how much does it take to move the needle? And uh, stories of sales nine months in the future, well, we could be attacked by wild bees and boars and bears all at the same time uh, before that even happens. So uh, I'm not... Uh, I don't know. I'm uh, saying this is a little self-flagellation uh, from the market out here, thinking that, uh, well, as they do, they like to talk the market up. When we come back, we'll look at Alcoa, a little bounce out of this baby today. But, uh, you know, upgrades, eh, not all that much, uh, not all that effective. You've got to have a lot of shorts in it. And $10 stock, probably not a lot of shorts in Alcoa. Uh, we've got other ones moving out here, but most of this stuff is news-driven and not by hard news, but uh, weak news. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And a question in the den from Tammy. She's talking about AMD. And, of course, uh, it's breaking above its uh, earnings announcement uh, that was on the 22nd of April. Had a big volume day that day, 143 million shares, uh, 24 million so far today. Uh, asking if anything significantly had changed. And the thought is that maybe someone will buy them out for the graphics part of their business. NVIDIA uh, is, uh, you know, basically on the tails of Advanced Micro. Their uh, PC processor sales are in the dirt. They have not gotten uh, any better, but there's a little bit of uh, discussion out here about uh, this uh, going broke. And uh, I think that had a lot of people shorting the stock. Uh, right now, you've got about uh, one out of every five shares is still short down here at the $4 level. Uh, a lot of people are banking on this company going out of business. Um, their earnings statement made that much more problematic. And I suspect that uh, over the last few days, everybody was shorting a great deal more anyway. Do I think that there's anything going on out here? Uh, short of a buyout, nothing has changed in the earnings department other than the fact that they're doing a little bit better uh, than a lot of people thought, and they're not going out of business just yet. Of course, uh, AMD got the contract for the Xbox 360 um, and... Uh, you know, at least they've got somebody buying their processors, but uh, they have not done a great deal to actually compete with Intel at all in PC processors. So they're really left to their graphics department uh, and the uh, graphics part of the business. And the thought is that maybe they're going to move uh, and do a lot more like NVIDIA, which is start selling the very expensive products. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm looking at a video card right now from NVIDIA that's about 500 bucks. Um, of that, uh, the cost to manufacture is about 150. So there's some fairly decent wood in the very high end part of this business. Uh, Nvidia and both uh, AMD are trying to get out of the uh, $50 video card business, uh, where th there just isn't a lot of money to be made and a lot of money to be lost. Um, I, I think the thinking is that they're going to be more like Nvidia. Therefore, maybe they're starting to get a few shorts out of this. Um, but has anything really changed? I don't think so. They still don't have the money of Intel or NVIDIA. And uh, other than the high-end part of the graphics business uh, that NVIDIA is enjoying, there isn't a lot from uh, AMD. Remember, uh, NVIDIA really only has a pure play on those 
cards. AMD has a lot of legacy issues where they have to build uh, old processors and still fulfill contracts uh, that NVIDIA does not have. And of course, uh, NVIDIA can put his engineers on those more high-end video cards that uh, where they make some huge margins. Uh, you know, AMD has their cards too, but this seems like they're fallen behind uh, NVIDIA like uh, AMD has fallen behind Intel. Um, I'm, I would always be very wary about it. I think you're probably okay until the next earnings cycle, which my guess will be a disappointment yet again. But uh, that's uh, that is it. It's just uh, it's a business that has deteriorated for Nvidia and AMD to the most expensive uh, part of their cards. Uh, let's see what else do we have out here? Uh, Andy has a bunch of articles out on Seeking Alpha. Check them out. Of course, uh, my favorite were the uh, Bear BSF, BASF. I always remember those ads that they ran here in the 70s. We don't make things, we make them better. Uh, talk about uh, vague and uh, unknowing advertising. Uh, very weird. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you, uh, if you want to know what's actually selling uh, in uh, technology, uh, the best thing to always to do is just go to the uh, New Egg uh, website uh, where most people buy their computer components to build their computers. It's newegg.com. I'm waiting for new egg to come up. Here we go. And what do you always see on the uh, top page? Uh, mostly it's the hot selling products. And of course, uh, just about, uh, I don't know, about all the time now, the number one thing that pops up uh, is always, uh, or, or first, is always um, these very expensive video cards. Um, and, uh, that's it. Like, uh, you can see in here, these video cards are 300, 340, 340 bucks. And I bet if I go down here, we'll even find, uh, uh, the, some newer ones, but, um, I've got a couple of these in the machine I'm using here on the air. And I think, uh, eh, I don't need the absolute barn burner, but I think I have two cards. I probably paid 200 bucks a piece for. Eh, it's not too bad, but it's all about getting them faster, all about getting them cool. And uh, so it's all about putting fans on them and even liquid cooling to keep them cool. These things are so fast. Um, one of the other things that's very interesting about this particular business, uh, and then we'll move on to some other stocks, uh, is libraries that allow you to use the graphics processors on these cards. These things are, are, known, what are known as pipelined uh, processors, and you can write some code that is very good for uh, doing very specific uh, problems uh, using those processors not to make images on your screen, but actually to do things like uh, bus codes uh, if you're a hacker, and of course uh, many other things, uh, many new libraries using these things for very specific uh, issues, machine learning, um, a lot of other stuff. So uh, uh, not just for your video game anymore. A lot of these things are being used uh, at the very high end uh, for mathematical computing uh, for both good and nefarious uh, issues. But uh, eh. check out uh, newegg.com if you ever think uh, you're wondering whether uh, what is selling and what is hot. Uh, it's always on there. Uh, anyway, we're looking at the chart out here. Not a lot uh, going on, so we will move on. Uh, let's see what else we have out here. Uh, Skylarks, uh, da, 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 uh, and continuing my theme from last week, just a lot of these stocks people are way too short. Uh, and any kind of decent news or anything uh, that's even positive can see a big bounce. I didn't see this one coming. Uh, but it is Cambridge Displays. It's now called OLED. used to have another name. Everybody used to know them as Panel uh, when this thing was a high flyer. Always uh, weird about uh, stocks changing their name. Uh, but uh, light uh, LED and OLED. OLED is really a play on what they do, which is organic light-emitting diodes. Um, and uh, it is another way of 
uh, making LEDs. The other way basically revolves around using rare earth elements uh, that are problematic to get and China controls. Uh, most of the push now is for these better, uh, less power uh, hungry displays. When you really look at uh, what Apple will have on their uh, uh, screens next year, what Samsung will be using at the high end phones, uh, what the big screens will be using uh, for 4K resolutions. It's all this OLED moving into the future. Um, but uh, just a small upgrade is all it took to run a bunch of shorts uh, out to do that. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Uh, and we've also got uh, Fiat Chrysler uh, getting the loser horn today, even though it's just... Down 5%. Uh, this may be the start of uh, something even worse. The reason why, uh, they kind of said that maybe they have uh, the VW issue, maybe a little bit, maybe just a touch. I'm, I feel like I'm coming down with a cold. <laughs> we cheated on our, <coughs> we, <coughs> we cheated on our uh, emissions, uh, illegal software and their emissions. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Move along, nothing to see here. Um, it's not down as bad as it could be, but um, normally uh, you start hearing this uh, a little bit and the truth 
uh, tends to drip out a little bit farther. As we found out in VW, it got much worse. Uh, but uh, do not be surprised to see this back down at the low end of its range at 587. Uh, I think everybody in the automotive uh, business is more than willing now to say, uh, you know what, shoot first, ask questions later. And uh, I think you might see that in the uh, Fiat and Chrysler company, F-C-A-U. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, yeah, you know, everybody's trading a little bit lower. Um, PDCE on my list of stuff to take a look at. Uh, down a little bit, PDC Energy. Uh, most of this stuff today is upgrades and downgrades, which is fairly typical uh, for options rollover, as we talked about it at the beginning of the show. Um, can they kind of push these things up and down a little bit? They can. You do still have a high volume low that is untested. That is the uh, May 6th low with 4 million shares. Um, you know, kind of getting into the wick of that already today, 1.6 million shares. But, uh, you know, too many high volume lows. What you really have to dislike is that if you go back to the uh, big candle that had no sign of strength on um, April 18th, well, that only had 1.2 million shares. Uh, that 4 million share day where this thing gapped down and then came back most of the day, still offers a problem that this thing could have uh, a downside back into that candle yet again. And of course, volume actually picking up today. Um, so look for that uh, back in that 153. See if there's anything else out here. Uh, check my email before the end of the show. Got one last email, wants me to look at Microsoft, uh, MSFT. Yeah, I don't see anything. Um, besides the disappointing earnings, I think uh, Microsoft was probably about as good as it could get at uh, 56, 77. It had a good, uh, huge, long run uh, from when it broke out of that huge consolidation. Um, don't think that there's a great deal more that you can say about it other than that. Uh, they are planning some new things. As I said over the weekend, uh, got a bunch of new uh, uh, initiatives that Microsoft's giving developers uh, for the cloud systems and other stuff like that. But, uh, maybe this stock got a little bit ahead of itself. Uh, and, of course, uh, it's hard to continue uh, keeping up uh, the uh, avid pace of new products and earnings. But uh, I do have to say that uh, uh, they did very well in converting me once again into Office 365. They offered me a free month and no billing for uh, 60 days to uh, continue uh, to use Office and uh, it's not a bad deal. Um, I think they've got me hooked. What is it, 100 bucks for the year? It's not bad. Anyway, they're not billing me till the middle of uh, July, I think. So, a nice uh, uh, 45 days or 60 days. Yeah, interesting. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Remember to sell when you can, not when you have to. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.